Today, we're going to get into the new macOS Sonoma update that's released in this fall. There's a lot of new features in this one, so I will include the timestamps in the description below if you want to go ahead and skip a certain section. But since we have a lot to unpack, let's jump right in. There's a ton of new features with the appearance alone, so let's go ahead and start there. The lock screen has been redesigned to include the date and time at the top of your screen, and then move the login to the bottom of the screen, which frees up your space to display more of your wallpaper. These two changes are going to mimic the look of your iPhone and iPad. They also added new slow motion screensavers of different locations worldwide, and when you log in, they seamlessly transform into your desktop wallpaper. They also made a subtle change to the app icons and the spotlight search bar by making them more rounded. The widgets have been completely revamped. The enhanced widget gallery, direct desktop placement, and subtle fading effects herald a new era for widgets on the Mac. So to break this down, you used to be only able to see your widgets from the notification center but now they can be placed anywhere on the desktop, finally creating that more customizable experience that we've all been dying to see. You can now interact with the apps within your widgets without needing to launch the app, making this a more seamless approach. You can play or pause media, control smart home gadgets, take notes, check off reminders, and keep track of your calendar appointments without ever needing to open the app. Another awesome feature with this is the option to showcase widgets directly from your iPhone onto the Mac. This is possible by the power of continuity this means that you can effortlessly place widgets that you commonly use on your iPhone directly onto your Mac without the hassle of installing the associated apps on your Mac system. They also have added a fading effect, which allows your widgets to blend into the background when an app is in use. This feature ensures that while you engage with an app on the foreground, the widgets remain visible but not distracting, subtly enhancing the overall aesthetic and functionality of your workspace. So let's move on to the keyboard and dictation enhancements. With with the introduction to the Mac OS Sonoma, you will experience the significant improvement related to the typing dictation functionality. These updates are designed to make text input more intuitive and efficient, starting with the caps lock indication. A subtle but welcome change in the update is the introduction of a visual cue of the caps lock key. When activated, an indicator is going to appear next to the cursor, which makes it so much easier to realize if your caps lock is on or not. Aligning with the improvements seen in the iOS 17, Mac OS Sonoma's auto correct feature has way more accuracy, which I don't know about you, but I get extremely frustrated with the autocorrect sometimes. And a word that has been autocorrected is now underlined, so if a mistake is made, the original spelling can be quickly restored with just a single click. And now we get inline prediction text when we're typing, not only offering just single word suggestions, but full on sentences, enabling a faster and smoother typing experience. So with the dictation, Sonoma allows users to modify text without interrupting or canceling the ongoing dictation, which is essentially mirroring the iOS 16 update. If speech recognition encounters difficulty with certain words, you can manually spell them out on your keyboard during dictation. This adds that extra layer of flexibility and user friendliness to the dictation experience. And the dictation indicator is redesigned, which ensures users can easily identify when dictation is active. Feel free to go ahead and count how many times I just said the word dictation. The macOS Sonoma introduces a plethora of exciting Safari announcements, with profiles standing out as a star addition to the Apple's built-in browser. You can create as many profiles as you want, and each profile separates your history, extensions, cookies, favorites, and tab groups. I personally have separate profiles for work, personal, and shopping which I can easily toggle between whichever profile I want to use at that moment. This is great for keeping my bookmarks and favorites separated and organized without getting cluttered. And when creating a new profile, you can change the name, symbol, and coloring to make it easier to recognize. You can also choose what extensions you want to use within each profile. And another great feature with Safari is the ability to add any web page to your dock that functions as a normal app. Web apps also have a simplified toolbar for easier browsing, and you can get notifications from them too. The search bar is much more responsive and easier to use by giving you more relevant information, and the Safari's private browser mode is more private than ever. Rather than closing your tabs when you step away from your computer, you'll be able to lock your private browsing windows anytime you leave your computer now. So the next section I wanna talk about is gonna be the password and passkey sharing. There are instances where sharing certain passwords with friends, family, or colleagues is necessary or convenient, and Apple recognized this and 
introduced a new innovative password and passkey sharing feature. So this feature allows you to create designated groups and within those groups, you have the control to choose specific passwords to share. Whether it's a shared family subscription to a streaming service or a collaborative work tool among colleagues, this function can simplify that sharing process. Passwords are stored in the iCloud chain and are end-to-end -end encrypted. All users can add or edit passwords to keep them all up to date and any changes that are made, all members of the group are automatically notified. Additionally, the feature offers a level of flexibility and security control where you can effortlessly remove passwords from the group or even remove users themselves at any given time. Now onto conferencing and screen sharing. There are eight ton of new updates to unpack here that give an all around more functional and engaging experience. You know how when you're sharing your screen during a presentation, your presence can sometimes get lost? So to fix this issue, Apple just added a new video effect called presenter overlay, which will overlay your face over the presentation, separating you from the background, similar to a weather reporter standing in front of the weather map. You can opt between large overlay, which allows you to remain front and center while your shared screen is framed and layered behind you or next to you, or a small overlay where your face appears as a small movable bubble in front of your shared content that you can move around the screen. You can also fill your camera frame with 3D reality effects like thumbs up or confetti by using a hand gesture without actually interrupting the call. You can form two hands in a heart shape and hearts will appear, or flash the peace sign and see balloons all around you. You can give two thumbs up and fireworks appear, or two thumbs down and you'll see the rain. You're also going to have more control over Max built-in camera. You can position your face in the center of the screen, adjust the amount of background blur in portrait mode, and also choosing how wide or cropped you want to be on camera. A really cool feature that they're bringing to the Mac is called Game Mode. This is designed to give an invigorating gaming experience for Mac users by prioritizing the game you're playing on the CPU and GPU while giving less bandwidth to the background tasks. So this means you can expect a smoother experience with consistent frame rate. So a lot of new games are making their way to the MacBook for the first time ever, which is super exciting, and I can't wait to break some of these in. And they're also dramatically reducing latency with wireless accessories like your AirPods, and also reducing the input lag with gaming controllers with a double Bluetooth sampling rate. This is gonna add to that immersive gaming experience they're creating with Sonoma. So another big update is gonna be with your messages. If you're often in a lot of group chats, you can now use the catch up feature where you can jump to the first unread message in the group text. You will also see improvements to search within messages. When searching for something, results are divided into categories like people, keywords, photos, and links to make it easier to find. And the iMessage stickers have a new picker interface. So in an effort to prevent people from unexpectedly viewing sensitive images, and messages, airdrop, users will now have the option to enable sensitive content warning. That way photos and videos containing the dirty dirty will be blurred with the option to choose whether you want to see them and the ability to block the content. So let's go over some additional features that the Mac OS Sonoma is bringing to the table. For your PDFs, you'll be able to fill out PDFs in the preview using enhanced autofill. It'll identify fillable fields like your name, address, email, and it will automatically input that information for you. And within the Notes app, PDFs will be shown full width for an easier viewing experience. Simply drag the PDF to your Notes app and right click on the PDF. You can then click markup to start editing and sharing your PDF. Another update is that you can add five other people to your Find My Network accessories or air tags. Those added will be able to follow the item on the map and play the sound to help pinpoint the location of that item. Of course, the days of saying, hey Siri are gone. All you have to do is say Siri to trigger the voice assistant and you're good to go. In addition to recognizing people, the photo app will finally be able to automatically recognize pets and the visual lookup works with videos now too. And then you can now invite friends to join your playlist in your Apple Music. This is going to give them the ability to add, remove, and reorder songs. And then in your Reminders app, Reminders will automatically sort the items you add based on categories. It'll remember your preferences whenever you change how items are grouped. So when will the macOS Sonoma arrive? macOS Sonoma 
Sonoma is in the public beta stage right now, which means that anyone can download it and try it out. But do keep in mind, there will be a lot of bugs and glitches until the update actually launches. The first developer beta was released on June 5th and entered the public beta on July 11th of this year. Apple has said the exact release date for the Mac OS Sonoma will be sometime in the fall. And since the Mac OS Ventura was released October 24th of last year, Sonoma is going to expect to follow a similar release time frame. So I have listed the support of Macs for this update on the screen and in the description below. Comment below and let me know what your favorite updates are going to be and if any of these excite you. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Simultaneous, simultaneously, 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 it's been a long day. Whether it's a shared family subscription, it's a tongue twister, which can be also done within la la la, roll and peace of mind. Oh. <sighs>